You guys want to check out some malware analysis? I do. Let's have some fun. So go ahead and click the link in the description down below and you can follow right along in this PCAP. Now that link is going to send you over to my buddy's webpage and that's Brad Duncan. And he's got a full repository full of PCAPs, full of different types of malware infections. And he gave us permission to go ahead and use these. So thank you, Brad. Now, when you go ahead and download the PCAP, you're going to have to open it up locally on your machine. Now the password to do so is infected. Yes, we're dealing with live malware. So be careful. You are able to open it up in Wireshark and this will not infect your machine. However, what you don't want to do, okay, this is the warning, do not extract objects from this file and execute them locally. Don't do that. But you can interact with them through the PCAP and you'll be safe. All right, so first, when I'm looking at malware, one of the things that I like to do is just take a look at DNS. All right, so let's go ahead and set a filter for that. I'm gonna come up here to apply display filter DNS and we're going to filter in on all the calls that this station is making. So here you can see, first of all, we're here at uh, 28.229. That's our IP that uh, of the machine that allegedly has this infection that we're investigating. And if I come over here, I can see that there's lots of no such names that are being looked up. We're doing some lookups there. But something that's going to catch my eye is often when I see a machine that's doing uh, what is my IP lookup. Now, an end user won't often do that, right? So the reason why a malware infection will is the malware wants to know what is the external IP address. So when it goes through the NAT and enters the world, what address will it be coming from? So basically, how can I tell my attacker to phone home? What IP am I actually coming from? So that's something that I'll look for. It won't do it in all cases, but that would be something to kind of trigger my little radar. Hmm, maybe I have some strange traffic going on. Next, let's go ahead and say, okay, there's DNS. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to HTTP. Okay, so just take a look at some low-hanging fruit, just analyze through a few different HTTP calls. Now, the reason why this is going to catch my attention is because a lot of times today, you and I do, uh, we browse the web, we go out to different sites, and we do so over secure web. We're going to be doing this over port 443, not port 80 anymore. There might be a few applications that still use 80, but if I start to see a lot of calls over port 80, I'd be interested in where these calls are going to, who we're talking to, uh, what are the user agents or what the server names that we're talking to, and what direction is traffic going in. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. All right, we, we set the filter for HTTP. Let's go ahead and right click on the first one, and I'm going to say follow TCP stream. Now there's a few things that jump out at me here. Okay, so this is coming from user agent curl. So it's directly using that curl call, and it's not using a standard user agent if this person was using a Chrome browser or Firefox, all right, or Mozilla. You would see a very long user agent string there. But this one's pretty short. And also when I see it come back, the server's name is Cowboy. Wonderful. And Cowboy is giving us an IP address, 173.166.146. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy that. I'm gonna say close. And I'm just gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna set a filter for that IP. I'm just curious, does this station then go talk to that IP address that came back from Cowboy? All right, I'm gonna put that IP in there. And in this case, I don't see that. I don't see the client went out to talk to that advertised IP. I'm just gonna store that away for later. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. Let's come back into our HTTP. Take a look at these calls. So notice that the client does a get, and then after that, you know, a little while later, it does, starts doing posts. All right, so let's start investigating these posts. I'm gonna right click this post, and I'm gonna say follow TCP stream. And let's take a look a little closer what I'm looking at. So first of all, there's my user agent. Now this is looking like a little bit more normal of a user agent, but check out the host that I'm talking to. So that's something that I identify. When I'm talking to a web server, I say, okay, here's my user agent, but what host am I talking to? If I talk to YouTube, then I would be going to youtube.com. If I go to XYZ News or whatever news, then I would be identifying that here in the host field. But here I just go straight to an IP address. All right, so I'm gonna note that for later. And notice the kind of stuff that I'm sending. Again, remember, I'm posting this. I'm not pulling it, I'm not getting it. I'm posting it. So here I can see form data, bill info, card info, and I'm also talking to Cowboy. Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Next step, I'm going to come in and I want to know 
where is this 3689106 address? So where in the world am I talking to? If I expand IP, I can go ahead and take a closer look and notice I'm going to Indonesia. Okay, well, this activates the part of Wireshark where I'm, I'm using the GeoIP lookup where I can actually see where in the world an IP physically is located according to the GeoIP databases. Now, if you want to do, learn how to do that, I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below. I have another video on how to actually enable the GeoIP option within Wireshark. Okay, so I'll teach you how to do that in another video. Okay, so I'm hitting Indonesia with this post. Let's go ahead and keep going. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to reset my HTTP filter again. And that was that first call. Let's go ahead and take a look at this next call. Right click, follow TCP stream. This time, wow, so I export the pop3 mail.catbomber.net and here's a username and a password. Interesting. Wow, what am I trying to export? Well, down here, yeah, I even identify things. I'm trying to send out those Outlook passwords. Nice. Here's my email client. Here's a username and password. Go check it out. Just go ahead and access my email. Let's come down here to the right. You can see stream nine. Let me go up to stream 10. And here I'm trying to export open VPN passwords and configs. I thankfully don't see any there. And if I keep going here and also open SSH private keys. Nice. Okay, Mr. Attacker, you can just have this stuff. Let's, call, let's go and close this. Thankfully I didn't see the, any of those things. Next, okay, HTTP, just kind of crawling through these different calls. If I come down here, I'm going to jump forward in time a few hundred milliseconds. And again, this is a post. Okay, so let's go ahead and right-click this guy. Let's see what else we're posting out here. And here we have some nice system information. And we're sending it out to this address on this port number. Here's all of our system processes. So just in case you wanted to know a bit more about how to exploit me, here you go. That's, that's the process list test. Also in system information, here's my name, here's my domain, here's my IP, uh, here's the subnet mask I use, my default gateway, my DNS. Um, what else do you want to know about me? Uh, this is my software version I'm running. That's kind of old, that's Windows 7 on this system. And then I have NetView All. Come down here, take a look at some Active Directory stuff. Here I've got my domain controller, Capbomber DC. Oh, usernames and passwords, anybody? So here's a username, here's guest, here's another username, Timothy, uh, Philip. And again, I'm exporting all of this out to Cowboy. Nice. Well, it wasn't just this one station, this uh, Cat Bomb W7PC. If I go up another stream, I'm going to actually kick up a couple of them. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go and close this down. Head back to my web, HTTP. I'm going to come down here, and what I'm looking for, I'm actually going to come down to this bottom post, right-click it, and if I come down to follow stream, this is where I do the same thing, but notice, now the Cat Bomber DC, the domain controller, has been infected. So now it's exporting its stuff, right? So wonderful. Uh, 28.8, that was the DNS system that was just identified in the other system. Great, so now my domain controller has been impacted. Okay, so let's go ahead and close. All right, so clearly I have an attack. I'm exporting this uh, system information out there, but something else I can notice. Ooh, Phnom Penh, okay, anybody? Cambodia, good. All right, so that's where we're exporting it to. Now, if I clear out that filter, one other thing I can look for, since I see that this malware is at least partially using open web, is I can come up here to my file, export objects, HTTP. Now this is where I can come down and I can see that I've got imgpaper.png. So here's the actual file that's being requested from this 162 address. Okay, imgpaper.png. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, remember I warned you before, do not export and run this file locally. Do not say save and execute it. No then you'll be infected with this malware. We don't want that. So let's say close. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a frame contains IMG paper, all right? So that'll show me the one call where that get happens. I'm gonna right click it, gonna go to follow TCP stream and notice about this file. So allegedly the name of this file is imgpaper.png. So this is the, it appears like an image. But if I take a closer look, I can see down here that the beginning of this file is actually the code 
for a binary file in Windows. In fact, when this system begins to transmit this file over to me, we can see it's a 503k. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. That tells me that this is a binary executable on Windows. So basically this server is saying, oh, Windows 7, here's an executable for you to run. Go ahead and execute it. And then we'll be up to even more bad things, right? So this was hiding under the imagepaper.png name. So that's not good, right? So let's go ahead and close that. Okay, so how is that something that I could quickly filter for? What if it wasn't that file name next time, but it was still hiding, an executable was hiding under a different file name? Well, that's something that I can come up here and I can just do a display filter. And one that I've used in the past is frame contains, and this is where I do my uh, quotation mark, DOS, capital DOS, mode. All right, so show me all packets that have the DOS mode string in there. So the packets, the two that I get, the first one here, it says, if I expand this, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So this is the beginning of an executable file running across the wire. And the second one is the same. So there's two files that I received from a server out there. And if I head check my GOIP, I can see where it's coming from. Oh, from Nodes Direct, right there in the United States. Fantastic. They're giving me these executable files. Now, one thing that I could do is I could extract these, I could save these, and I could upload them to Virus Total, and then that would give me more information about the type of infection. But before I do that, there's one last trick that I'm going to show you looking at this malware. And that is if I jump all the way to the top, there's a really interesting thing that Wireshark does that we can utilize when we're looking at malware. And that is this first Sin Synac Go ahead and jump all the way to the top with me. Check out this client hello. Now there's a few things that look weird about this client hello. Let me go ahead and, and collapse this. First of all, we're running off to another country, Germany, wonderful. Okay, so if I take a look at TLS, first of all, it's TLS 1.0, so the version I don't like to see that anymore in modern networks. I want to see well, 1.2, 1.3 or better, depending on when you're watching this video. But TLS 1.0 at the time of this recording is very archaic. This is old TLS. We shouldn't have any legitimate clients that are using this version. And I see that I also do not have another TLS extension where a higher version could be negotiated. Sometimes you'll see uh, a station initially just use version TLS 1.0 just to get in the door and talk to a server, but then it offers through a TLS extension some other versions to use. But in this case, that's not being done. Now, JA3, what this is, is it's basically a string that shows the different options within this client hello in this code format. So don't worry too much about what these numbers actually are right now, but just know that each client hello has a signature. So we can fingerprint the type of application that is sending this TLS hello based on the different options that are sent. So in this case, we look at version, we look at even the ports that are used, uh, we can take a look at the cipher suites that are offered, we can look at the extensions length, all of these go into creating a fingerprint for us. So what we do is we take that full string and then we throw it through an MD5 hash. That hash value is right here, JA3. So let's do this. Let's do a right click. We're gonna do a copy value. And I want you to come out here and this is JA3ER.com. I'll link that in the description down below. And what you could do is you could just paste this JA3 hash into their search and you can hit search for it. And what this will do is it'll look at the repository for any fingerprints of TLS clients that are initiating a connection using that hash value. And that hash is made from all of the little values that it sees in that client hello. And here right away we see that this is a trick bot infection. Okay, so that client was overtaken by a trick bot malware and that trick bot initiated a secure connection using that signature that we could identify as being from TrickBot. So I hope you like combing through this malware example with me. Let me know in the description down below if you like this kind of video of taking a look at the packet level as far as infections and intrusions and exploits like this. Uh, and I can start to make a bit more content like this. Now, you did see me rip through a bunch of different screens. So to help you get some more training on how to use Wireshark and do this type of analysis, go ahead and click here for lesson one of my Wireshark masterclass.